Hello everybody, I am Brian Mullins the Fox here for a Drama Archive exclusive response video. And it's not just one of those response videos where I don't show a single clip from any of the videos he's made on me. He has so desperately forced my hand to the extent where this video is a thing, and I hate that it is a thing. But without going too far deep into this tangent, I'm gonna let the video play for the first clip. I used to think that Brian Mullins the Fox was just a fucking retard, a retarded virgin furry. And after some careful examination, I have come to the conclusion that no, Brian Mullins the Fox is exactly the pedophile everybody thinks he is. Exactly who's everybody? You don't represent the entirety of the YouTube sphere, the internet. You're not even one to represent the entirety of the commentary community. There are so many subsectors and sectors that are much more popular and bigger than you. And no, I'm not a pedophile. If you're going to make a positive claim, don't get pissy or hesitate to actually provide evidence, which you can't. Because none of what you're about to show could ever be proof of any. So what you're doing now is attempting to de-platform me. To silence me completely. And if you dare try to DMCA this fucking video, you're gonna lose fucking badly. Because not only have you dropped the word lolcow all of a sudden. No, because of course that never fucking worked. It was largely ineffective and nobody cared. But just cause I mentioned that you may or may not have had hentai or any further degenerate porn than the image of a horse doing a dolphin. You then took LFC1, put words in my mouth, took it completely out of context, said that anybody who flagged it was a massive coward, and then you decide to turn on me because what? I wasn't thankful enough for calling them out for being cowards? and you not having any self-awareness to the fact that you contributed to this happening. I see how it is. Let's continue. At the library, it took me well over an hour to eat a huge cucumber, about 12 to 14 inches long. I ate it all in one sitting. I totally believe that you just sat there at the local library scarfing a fucking 14 inch cucumber like some fucking thirsty f desperate to deep throat black cock and they didn't kick you out of that fucking library as a result of being a fucking weird freak wait what the fuck i ate that cucumber because it was fucking delicious you fucking degenerate quit fantasizing about me eating or sucking black cock what is it always with people like you who fantasize about black cocks you need to get that checked you see, he not only tells us what his previous crush was, previous to that character, but also goes on to say what his current crush is. Spoiler, none of them are human. Fun fact, I've had fictional character crushes before I had one with Sasha Le Fur in 2014 and lost my non-furry virginity. The first fictional character crush I can remember having as a kid was with Marlene from the Penguins of Madagascar. It's official. Zen the Corsac Fox from Kung Fu Panda 4 is my next official fictional character crush. First time in a decade since I established one myself. Why is it so difficult for you, Brian, to have a crush like a normal fucking person? You know, a crush on... I don't know, a person. By the way, I'm not going to have to address his complete lies and misinterpretations of a creepypasta fanfic, and it had nothing to do with me being super or hyper obsessive with Sasha LaFleur. You know, if you've archived that story, you would have seen that. But apparently your ADHD has afflicted you so heavily that you're such a fucking bumbling stumbling idiot that you fail to understand that completely. And that's not my fault. You don't get to fucking blame me just because you didn't watch the entirety of the video or at least be somewhat damn near accurate. Not to take any of it out of context or use it as a gotcha against me like Lyle Convoy has because he's a retard. And plus, why does it matter that much to you that none of my crushes were human? What's it to you, fucknut? All the crushes I've ever had as a kid growing up and even to this day are not real and even still. 
they're animals. A furry is an anthropomorphic version of a character or a persona. There is no reason to be super highly obsessive over who has what crush, what reason, why. It's just fucking creepy for you to do that. Instead of swatting furries, I think that that's a travesty. I don't think you should swat furries. Instead, you should send fucking animal control to their home so they can be removed from the premises and shoved into the pound and then turned later into fucking, like, furry slaves for rich people. And again, you still have this false notion that every furry wants to fuck an animal, which is highly beyond me because he has a fetish with killing furries, with wanting them to die with wanting them to fucking kill themselves. And I find that absolutely and unbelievably hypocritical because you shat on Hopeless Peaches in a community post for lying or using false zoophilia or zoo sadism accusations against people doesn't make you better. It makes you a waste of space and you're a piece of shit for doing it. And now you've become that piece of shit. Learn what fucking hypocrisy means, Vlad. Nobody put any words in your mouth, Brian. All I ever did was listen to the words that you said and then respond to them in kind. It's not my fault if half the shit you say is a bunch of schizoid nonsense like the following. I just figured out why parents would want to wait until the soon-to-be victim hits puberty. It is to give predators and the government more of an opportunity to get them while they're still young. And that puberty fucks with their hormones as well. Brian, that doesn't make any sense. That is fucking insane. The fuck is wrong with you? Build yourself a bird furry outfit, climb to the tallest fucking building you can find, and then leap from it. Fly like a bird, fucking lunatic. Vlad, that was not a fucking rebuttal in any given way, shape, or form. All you're doing is practically telling me to kill myself. Die in a fire. And to make matters worse, one of his pals is uh, arguably a pedophile. Because not everybody on the planet has quote-unquote intrusive thoughts about grooming children. So tell me about the intrusive thoughts. What's that about? Murderous mongrel. Trauma symptom. Fucking nightmarish trauma symptom that sprouts up after two to six months of being on constant survival mode. Likely the reason their intrusive thoughts of grooming is because the topic was a constant discussion point at the time when I first had any. I don't care if you claim it's some symptom of some fucking gay shit or what have you, it doesn't fucking matter, alright? Nobody is just casually walking down the street like, fuck, I want to groom a child today. Nobody thinks that way. Vlad, you fucking mongoloid. Did you even read and then go back and check what she actually meant. Of course not, because you're a fat fucking liar. It reads, trauma symptom, fucking nightmarish trauma symptom that sprouts up after three to six months of being on constant survival mode. Meaning that she is speaking in the perspective that she's the victim, not the groomer. Also, it reads, likely the reason their intrusive thoughts of grooming is because the topic was a constant discussion point at the time when I first had any. Grooming as in another time where she's the victim of another groomer. Not that she has any fantasies of grooming people. What the fuck is actually wrong with your reading skills and how to read through them, see what they mean and why? Because if you're going to read these tweets out of context, you kind of make it look like you're wanting to accuse me of being a pedophile because you accused her of being a pedophile over this one tweet. And I've made a video on this channel before clearing her name, although getting a few minor things wrong. This is clearly guilt by association. And you're no different than Lyo Convoy, and you wonder why I say that. Because you got that info from him, and others who think like him. Because you, Lyle Convoy, Queen Serafina, and others have the same thought process. And I hate it. It's all listen and believe to me. Moving on. I would not trust Mongrel to watch my kid. And I most certainly wouldn't trust Brian Mullins the Fox 
to watch my kid. You wouldn't trust any fucking stranger to watch your kid. Because guess what? That's your job. That's your literal job. Why would you need to say that if you know it's your fucking job? That's so retarded. And plus, you brought your own fucking kids into this. It's your fucking fault that Lyo dragged your fucking kids into this past drama between you and him. Because you make your children public, as in they exist. Never, ever mention that you have family or kids on the internet like this. Because it's going to make you look no differently than that fat fucking bastard Lyo Convoy. But outside of this, this is when things get a little spicy for me. Because what follows, and what follows is clips from a video that he titled, uh, How to Actually Raise Your Children. Yeah, really. For the first two to three years, here are the only things you would need to do when it comes to taking care of and raising said child. Number one, change their diapers anytime you smell a stink that's impossible to ignore. But don't change their diapers too often, because it would just be a waste of diapers. Say between one and a half to three hours when they're a newborn, and by the time they're a toddler or two or three years old, once at best every ten hours. Every kid is unique though, this isn't a set in stone, be an end all estimate for when you should change a toddler's diaper. Every kid is unique. Some have sudden steamers, and others have campy logs. By doing this, you should save somewhere between $200 and $500 on diapers alone each year. So right out the gate, Brian is quite literally promoting child abuse. The reason why I say it's child abuse, for those of you that don't have children, whenever the kid shits themselves, if you don't change it immediately, they can develop a rash, a very uncomfortable rash, and it can get infected and all that other not fun, gross shit. If you don't change the diaper every time and just let it sit there and fester, that's ultimately generally the result. You actually want to change the diaper immediately as soon as you smell that smelly smell. Brian is literally promoting the opposite of that in the effort of saving money. And if really saving money is the goal, why not just say, well, fuck the kid entirely and just never change their diapers. Just let them shit all over the fucking floor and piss all over everywhere. Wouldn't that save you loads of money on diapers? You could just use a reusable diaper if you really, really are that money conscious. Brian has no idea what he's talking about. He has no kids. Nobody's ever gonna fuck Brian because he's a fucking virgin and he's fat. I never said never change their diaper. You never know what you're gonna feed that baby and how it's going to affect their tummy. Not all babies or children are created equal. Sometimes you would have to change them often, as in like the first two hours or less. But again, it doesn't represent all babies because they're not all like that. Some babies get constipated and may not need to change their diapers all that much. And it's not just about saving money. It's also about you being a worthwhile resource as a parent by not being wasteful. You cannot just change a diaper the moment a baby shits in it. And if you were to do, it would almost certainly not be as common as you think it is. And clearly I did not say let them shit all over the floor. Fuck off. I only said change the diaper of the baby between whatever range of hours depending on their age. That was it. I don't have to be a parent to tell you that just because a baby shits in a diaper doesn't always mean you're gonna smell it immediately. Only change it when you actually cannot ignore that smell. Like what I said in that video. Did you just ignore that? Of course you fucking did. When they're babies that don't even have their baby teeth yet, and if the mother can naturally lactate, let her pucker them up until they reach the age of two years old. When they develop teeth, keep them on baby food supply until they're all developed and the child can eat foods that require the use of their baby teeth. When they hit their toddler years, feed them an equal balance of protein, fiber, fats, carbs, and veggies. If the mother figure suggests otherwise, out of just spiteful contrarianism, or because she think it might 
do harm to them somehow for some fucking reason. Do the opposite without telling her and see how she responds. That'll teach her not to be such a bad parent and a bitch. Weaponize your child against your significant other. Great fucking parenting. In no way, shape, or form is that manipulative, abusive, or anything. Nope, nope, nope. Please, for the love of fuck, Brian, cut your fucking dick off. If any kind of yours wants to know what the place they came from looks like, if you will, just show them for a short period of time and do this after warning them that it might scar them mentally. Note, this is not child abuse, but suppressing their innocence by depriving them of that sexual knowledge is. In fact, if you want a brother or a sister and you're a little kid, and if you're old enough to somehow know where you came from, ask them kindly if they may allow you to, watch in a safe enough angle the process of intercourse without scarring you any further for life. That is child abuse. Showing your children porn is child abuse. Brian, that's, um... Hello, darkness, my old friend. That is both child abuse and insanely illegal. I cannot believe Brian, unironically, thought it was a good idea to pull up OBS or whatever the fuck and be like, yo, I'm gonna advocate for showing children porn. But anyway, in this same video, he gives a little bit more copium on his legalized child porn video being removed from the internet. All my video promoted is a multi-pronged approach of legalizing all porn, including fictional CP, by phasing out illicit CSAM material and even CR material so that child traffickers are run out of business that way. The problem with this, as you guys will come to learn, is his definition of what porn is. And once you learn what his definition of porn is, you'll quickly understand why this rationale is stupid. And stigma in only this one context and one context alone is the same stigma surrounding porn in general. Not just child porn, because people are too fucked to get the difference between that and actual child abuse material, or even child rape material. Because the said abuse material isn't staged or faked, it's real. People making money off of that trivializes the very definition of porn. Porn is supposed to be staged. So to translate for the normal viewer that isn't a retarded furry virgin, what Brian Mullins is actually arguing here is that child pornography as we know it isn't actually pornography because it isn't staged. But the problem with that is that if you look up the definition of pornography, it doesn't have anything to do with it being staged. In fact, it just says anything that depicts any sexual act for the purposes of enticing somebody. I'll be posting the screenshot, of course, of the definition on the screen if you want to look at it. This, of course, would include the weird romance novels that white women read for some reason that don't even include images. Okay, I'm going to have to make this very fucking clear and simple to you. Porn is supposed to be a form of entertainment provided to their consumers by pornographic websites. Regardless if it's non-fiction or fiction, as in not IRL, not as in real or fake, has to be staged in a way to where you're not calling child sexual abuse or exploitation material porn to the point where you're not literally spitting in the face of actual rape victims who were children at the time of the rape happening. And yes, it is worse than a woman apologizing to her rapist. But does it make me a rapist just because I said that? No, that would just be like Lyo saying that you're a rapist without any victims yet. A dictionary's definition of the word porn not being specific enough to make it abundantly clear that the porn is staged does not necessarily mean that it isn't staged. Or the other way around. This motherfucker saw an arrow that was pointing right here on Spongebob, asserted it was on Lost in Space, you must be talking about hentai and lolicon. No. And in that clip, I said you're not just purchasing plastic discs, assuming they still make those, whilst having a shelf of said 
plastic discs. It was me making fun of me. Somehow, because I happened to use BDSM as an example, he saw an arrow pointing at Spongebob, thought it was pointing at Lost in Space, asserted that I was talking about owning BDSM porn, looked it up, found a lolicon parody of Lost in Space, and then asserted that I was a lolicon. But that wasn't you making fun of yourself. You were using that as a point. In the same video, or LFC6, I also hinted at the fact that you might have just been making this shit up, but it was sus and a bit weird nonetheless. Did you pay attention to that? I guess you didn't, because I'm not gonna trust what you say about it, because you're a liar, Vlad. Also, I think that arrow was not pointing at Spongebob, even though you clearly say it did. It was mainly pointed at Lost in Space, as an... Erwin Allen's Lost in Space, the complete collection on DVD. Just because an arrow isn't directly on the thing you're pointing out, does not mean that it's not pointing out what you were referring to. If anything, the opposite is true. You were pointing at something else than what the arrow was set to point at. I don't know about anybody else, but using this as an example is fucking stupid. Just to generally point that out. I don't think that someone like you who has a past of trolling people with zoo porn, scat, shock porn, is ever allowed to come back with anything to an extent when it comes to recovery. Because you falsely accused me of being a pedophile because of a tweet you took out of context of Rose talking about herself being the victim and thoughts of grooming as in her potentially being a victim of another grooming scenario and a groomer and dishonestly spun it into her having sexual fantasies of grooming minors and or children. You fucking pervert. Never in my life have I seen such a disastrous piece of shit completely misconstrue what words actually mean, try to redefine it by saying that it's not specific if it was staged or not, and then claim that you have the moral fucking high ground to say anything else. Fuck you, Vlad. You have none of that. All you did was make a stupid-ass point that served no other purpose than to piss me off alongside with and outside of the fact that you just trivialized someone else's experiences with grooming as in she's the victim of said grooming and she's made that emphatically clear every single time and yet you still listen and believe against her it's like the pot calling the kettle black isn't it moving on plus i never in any way asserted that you were a lollycon you made that up all I did was call you a freak for being an anti and collecting porn in the first place. I didn't put you on the same level as Zhang, who allegedly, to be sure, commissioned Lollicon. Do you understand how fucking insane you are for literally insinuating something I clearly never said took that out of context, and then wondered why I still respond to you, even though you're not on the same level as Zhang. You're just a weird freak and a degenerate, also a hypocrite, for having porn in the first place if you're against having any porn in the first place, much less what you've literally been vocal against. And something I've been kind of vocal against, but to an extent where I'm not trivializing abuse, rape, or even worse. Normalizing the behavior by calling it porn in the fucking first place. As if it were to be just downright entertainment and nothing's ever gonna fucking come of it. I'll also expose a different side of Vlad you've never realized before. If that was really what you meant, Brian, I could not possibly be more bored out of my fucking mind. That was the most boring own I have ever seen in my life. Generally speaking, when you're trying to own somebody on the internet, you don't, again generally speaking, make up an entire fucking schizo post that really does nothing but make you look fucking insane. In fact, some might say that's the opposite of getting an own. I don't think the whole self-defense rape joke was funny at all. If anything, it was stupid, and now just seems tone deaf after what you've said in this fucking video that I had to force myself to do a point-by-point -point response to against you. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to make another response. I don't know what Vlad will do, but at this point, I'm absolutely certain 
that I will only play one more clip before I end this video. You see, if Brian actually spent, like, 15 seconds actually Googling the Elijah Craig small batch I was drinking in my video on him, he would have noticed that that bottle is around $30, as you can see on the fucking screen. Here I have a bottle of Jameson Stout Edition. That was about, I don't know, it was like $36, $35, something like that. Johnny Walker Black Label. That was about $45 at a Walgreens. Here's a bottle I've been drinking throughout this video. Lafroy 10. Great shit. About 50 bucks, Brian. $50. Isn't that crazy? Art Beg Cory Vrecken. I pronounced that terribly, but I don't care. And that, Brian Mullins, is $120. The expensive booze, the actually expensive booze that I showcased here, the Lafroig 10 and the Art Bag Cory Vrecken, are not bottles that I purchased out of my own pocket. Those were provided to me by my gracious Subscribestar supporters. When I said you were a financially irresponsible person, I wasn't mainly focused on the alcohol, but even then, holy shit, you're getting ripped off. I never said it was from your pockets. If anything, it's even more financially irresponsible, given that it's from other people's pockets. I was mainly referring to the whole incident where your website was down, most likely due to not being able to pay the monthly subscription outside of this. But now you made yourself look worse. And you know what? I'm going to do some math. All right, how much money is that? According to your estimation, you can take this with a massive grain of salt, but if he's right, that would only mean that he spent a total of $281-ish. This isn't an approximate amount, this is an estimate. It could be higher, but it could be a little lower. In conclusion, this video was a whole heaping of dog shit. The worst attempt at not only character assassination, but clearly a blatant attempt at my character. That has pretty much failed because, quite frankly, I don't know if you know this, you're a fat alcoholic, retard in his mid-30s, afflicted with ADHD so bad he has to lie about everything that anybody says, that anybody can literally go and watch themselves, I'm talking about the videos, to where this blatant assassination attempt at my character is largely ineffective. It'll still get a shitload of views anyway because all commentary is listen and believe when it comes to false pedo allegations. But that's about it. I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. Hopefully I won't have to do this ever again on the Drama Archive, but you don't know about Vlad, and I don't know either.